and welcome to Art and Fashion. This morning we're here with Harlan Fisher. Thank you for coming on the show, Harlan. It's my pleasure. Um, so you are the president of the Art Alliance of Contemporary Glass, correct? Yes, I am. All right. Can you tell us a little bit of information about what the Art Alliance of Contemporary Glass does? We are a 28-year-old organization mm -hmm. whose purpose is to have uh, art uh, made of, of glass treated as fine art and to support museums and exhibitions uh, and uh, art centers uh, throughout our country and uh, internationally. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been president? I've been president since November 2011. Mm -hmm. And the organization is an international organization? Yes, we have about a thousand members, maybe just over a thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it is in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, Canada, uh, Australia, uh, Israel, England, uh, you know, so it's certainly an international organization. And is there a home base for the organization? Uh, we have an administrator whose office is in Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, whoever, I guess, is the president, uh, that's where, you know, that's where the work uh, gets done. Mm -hmm. Now, does the organization actually organize any art shows, or do they help kind of get the artists to certain museums? Well. Let me give you an example. In mm -hmm. 2012, uh, which is considered the 50th anniversary of uh, Studio Art Glass in the United States, uh, we helped fund 172 uh, exhibitions of museums and art centers around the United States. Mm -hmm. So we normally give grants uh, to museums to, uh, to help set up the exhibitions and normally the glass exhibitions at the museums are, are some of the most popular uh, of all the exhibitions they have mm -hmm. and, and we'd like to see more and more of that and we had such a good year in 2012 that we want to continue this uh, and that's why you see more glass exhibitions at museums than, than ever before in the history of the United States. Mm -hmm. Does the Art Alliance usually contact the museums, or do the museums reach out to the Art Alliance? No, we have, a, we have a grant program, mm -hmm. uh, and on our website, uh, which is www.contemptglass.org, uh, you know, any museum or art center can uh, apply for a grant. And uh, we have a grants committee. Uh, usually the grants, uh, we have a fall uh, grants program and a spring grants program. So, you know, any uh, nonprofit organization can apply uh, mm -hmm. for that. And, uh, and, you know, we normally, as a matter of fact, this year we might be giving our, our millionth dollar uh, grant uh, to different uh, wow. art organizations. <laughs> That's wonderful to hear. Now, how did you get involved in glass and in collecting glass and in supporting the arts? Well, <laughs> I probably don't have enough time on this interview <laughs> for the whole story, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, years ago I was president of the Arts Council in Smithtown, mm -hmm. and uh, Norma Cohn, who was the executive director, uh, started to teach me uh, about art, and uh, we started to collect art in. Uh, 1993, I would guess, and then in 1995, I went to a friend's house who had collected uh, glass art, and uh, he had converted his garage to a gallery, uh, which I would never do because I like cars too much. <laughs> but uh, in any case, I walked in, and it was an epiphany for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the glass, the three-dimensionality of it, the the colors, uh, just you know, it just it was one of these uh, oh wow moments. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I joined uh, a New York uh, group of collectors, uh, of which I was president of that group for 10 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then a year later joined the Art Alliance for Contemporary Glass uh, to expand my knowledge base and, and so forth. And uh, uh, that's how it all got started. And okay. uh, so we've you know, been collecting, uh, you know, we've met a, a lot of uh, great people through the years. Uh, the artists themselves have all become friends. Uh, it's one of the nice things about 
collecting contemporary art uh, in general mm -hmm. is that the artists are still alive and uh, you get to meet them. A lot of them have been to our home. Uh, you know, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it's been a, been a good time and a, and a good experience and the people part of it is probably uh, the best. Mm -hmm. Now you have converted your home essentially or built your home around being sort of a gallery space. I'm not sure what came came first exactly. Well, the home <laughs> came first. When we the built the, mm -hmm. the original home, we had no art. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a lot of empty walls and, and you know, we just took our time and, and uh, you know, eventually we had more uh, art than space. And uh, so we put a big addition on the house and uh, we just managed to fit everything in and uh, um, you know now it's just a matter we have to find something that we really like better than what we already have and uh, we're in the process of uh, discussing with museums uh, you know about donating the work uh, eventually. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, with your home and your personal collection, how many pieces would you approximately say you currently house in there? <laughs> oh, you know, um, <laughs> there's a couple hundred pieces mm -hmm. uh, there. And, uh, you know, I always forget the number. The number always changes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we even have some, you know, the things that I don't have in my house, I have in my office. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always forget to add those in sometimes. But, you mm -hmm. know, I probably have you know, 25 pieces uh, in my office, in that, office that I don't really, <laughs> or maybe more, you know, I just, uh, I, I don't think about it that much. And, and perhaps we take it for granted because we mm -hmm. live with it every day. But uh, um, yeah, it, it's a significant uh, collection, I would say. Mm -hmm. Now I did find it interesting that you often have the galleries and the artists come and install their pieces themselves, correct? Some of the big pieces, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, for sure. We had a piece uh, that, that wasn't glass, but uh, it was 10 by 10. And, uh, you know, it came up from Atlanta. It's by an artist, Jimmy O'Neill. And, uh, you know, it was just too big for, you know, for me to get up on a ladder and hang. It wasn't mm -hmm. just like a little painting. Uh, so they did that. We had another piece uh, that came from uh, uh, Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, that weighed several hundred pounds that uh, uh, fortunately it was able to hang through a beam uh, in, in the ceiling. Uh, you yeah, know, most of the pieces are too heavy for us to, uh, move, to move. But <laughs> uh, uh, And this story is about all that stuff too. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, one time we had a, a gallery on, we had to move one big piece uh, and a gallery owner uh, on her way to Chicago from Prague uh, came and uh, I had a, a car pick them up at the, the airport with her crew and uh, they came and spent the night and they disassembled the piece and moved it to a new spot and reassembled it. And uh, when they were all done, uh, uh, they said all they wanted to eat was pizza because uh, <laughs> they couldn't get good pizza in Prague. <laughs> and, uh, and then they were off to Chicago the next day and, and we saw them out there a few days later. Okay. So hopefully they enjoyed the pizza <laughs> and, and the piece hasn't been moved. Um, in, it'll be 10 years mm -hmm. uh, now. So. Yeah, well, glass does have the nature to it to being heavy <laughs> and also to being fragile. So a yes. lot of the pieces do have a certain way they need to be handled in order to be moved or transported. Yeah, the blown glass pieces uh, which are the ones that I guess most people are, are, are most familiar with uh, that are in the shape of bowls or, or tall uh, uh, pieces. Uh, those aren't usually that heavy because, you know, the glass is just on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's like a glass, uh, only bigger. And, uh, uh, but the cast pieces, uh, which are our favorite ones, though a glass is very dense and glass is very heavy, mm -hmm. they're not nearly as fragile uh, but, uh, but they're very heavy, you mm -hmm. know, and they're not that you can't just pick it up and move it and, and clean it. Uh, uh, but that's what makes it special sometimes. You know, we have pieces that are uh, over 10 feet tall mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's just really, really enjoy looking at them and, and, uh, and sharing them with other people. Yeah. 
Um, now, glass isn't the only type of art you collect. You no. do also have photorealistic paintings that you enjoy. We have photorealism. Mm -hmm. uh, we have metal sculpture. Uh, you know, we have wall art, uh, you know, oil on canvas and acrylics and, you know, whatever we like, mm -hmm. uh, we have. And, uh, um, you know, we host uh, fundraisers uh, for different art organizations on Long Island to show people what, you know, art can look like, mm -hmm. you know, in a setting outside of a gallery. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some people have one or two pieces of art and, and we just have a whole house full of it. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we also have two dogs uh, that you met and, yep. <laughs> uh, and they don't touch anything. And, and uh, people always ask us, well, aren't you afraid they're going to knock things over? And I said, no. You know, they learn right away not to touch anything that isn't theirs. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and in all the years we've been collecting, uh, you know, we've never had an issue uh, dog-wise. Mm -hmm. um, have you, you know, always had dogs? We have had dogs uh, for... Uh, Probably 40 years. Uh, mm -hmm. We've rescued, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we have our 10th our rescue now, mm -hmm. uh, Emma, and, uh, and Connor was our ninth. Um, and, and they just, I think they enjoy the art too. Yeah. It, it's a nice, <laughs> you know, it's very peaceful for them. Mm -hmm. Um, now, a lot of people don't know how to get into contemp or into glass making from an artist's perspective. Um, there are schools around the United States as well as around the world that do that, and then there's also people who have more of like an engineering background. Can you elaborate a little bit about the yeah, schools? Yeah, interestingly and enough, of a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, maybe not a lot, but uh, there's a, a good percentage of artists that work in glass have engineering backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, because there's a lot of engineering uh, to glass. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, glass, uh, you know, melts at 2300 degrees and uh, it, it cools at different temperatures. So uh, if you're going to make a big cast piece, uh, you have to have a team of people that keep one end of it as you're, you're pouring it into a mold that they keep that side hot because that will cool as you're pouring mm -hmm. a glass here and the whole thing can crack. So unlike a, a painting where you can come back and touch it up, uh, if you don't get the dynamics of, of the casting right or, or the blowing, the whole thing can shatter and you have to mm -hmm. start uh, all over. Uh, so there is a lot of engineering that has to do with the color and uh, if you want to have uh, a metal uh, on the glass and, and so forth. Uh, uh, locally, uh, or pretty locally, uh, urban glass in Brooklyn mm -hmm. um, is a major regional uh, center uh, uh, for glass blowing and casting, and they have classes there. And uh, I know the uh, Art League of Long Island has bead making classes on, on a smaller level. Um, you know, so there. Uh, you know, for people, uh, you know, in, in New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, you have the Creative Glass Center of America down at the Wheaton uh, Art Center in Millville, New Jersey. So there, uh, you know, you can go, anyone can go online and look up glass centers, and, and a lot of the universities have glass uh, programs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been fortunate to uh, uh, cast glass a couple of times with Gene Koss, mm -hmm. who's the head of the a glass department at Tulane University down in New Orleans, and they have a wonderful uh, glass department, uh, usually for master's uh, programs and so forth. But there's, there's a bunch of those uh, around the country. So uh, I would say anybody can go online and, and try and find glass uh, blowing programs, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes there's local studios that, that have that as well. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of some of the bigger glass pieces, I thought it was really interesting in terms of the physics of it and how fickle and how it can tend to shatter and things like that. Um, for a larger glass piece, how long does it take to actually cool? Because that was something that actually surprised it me as could, well. It could take months. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of the, uh, they have to, uh, the cooling process is called annealing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, some of the, uh, I once made a paperweight in 1997, and uh, 
uh, you know, it cooled overnight, and it was just the size of like a, a, a snow cone kind mm -hmm. of thing, and a uh, snow globe. And, uh, uh, but some of the big pieces, they have to cool very, very slowly, because if one part cools at a, a temperature different from another, you get something called chill checks and little cracks. And uh, so some of the big pieces can take uh, a month or two. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if the artist can just knock these out, you know, one day after another. It's a major uh, process. Mm -hmm. uh, the smaller the piece, as a rule, uh, the less time it takes, well, certainly the less time it takes to cool. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the other hand, one of our artist friends who makes small pieces start, and uh, Allison Ruza from uh, Brooklyn, she starts inside and uh, uh, layers glass on top and paints people inside so you can actually look at a scene and the piece might only be about this big. Is that the piece you had in the kitchen? Uh, yeah, okay. it, the shoe store <laughs> where mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. it's a, and from an engineering perspective optically uh, she has to paint the people on each layer of glass so that they all end up being the same size even mm -hmm. though you're further out uh, and, and I watched her do this once with a big magnifying glass and a brush that had like one hair on it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know it takes her months just to finish one of these pieces, even though she doesn't have to deal so much with the annealing process. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so just because a piece is small doesn't mean it's quick. Yeah. You know, to make. Especially when it involves so many layers yes. and different elements to yeah. it. Uh, what? Artists, have you been collecting any specific names that you have or w want to get? Um, or <laughs> no, pretty much. Uh, you know, we've collected the artists that we, uh, um, you know, that we wanted to collect, and, and a lot of the names aren't names. Mm -hmm. You know, I could throw them all out, and uh, uh, the name that everybody asks us if we have is uh, Jahuli, mm -hmm. uh, who was probably the most uh, famous, and uh, and we don't have his. Uh, work, but we pretty much have, uh, you know, all the other artists that uh, that we want. We t we take our time, mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's new artists. Uh, you know, we just always emerge. You know, it's just a mm -hmm. matter of you know which work we like, which is something. Uh, you know, when we first wanted to get involved, we asked some people, well, how do you learn about this stuff? And they said, well, you join one of these groups. So mm -hmm. somebody could join in New York the Metropolitan Contemporary Glass Group. Uh, which you can find on the Art Alliance uh, website, and because they have, they don't have their own website, and uh, and we joined the Art Alliance for Contemporary Glass, and we met people and gallery owners, and we mm -hmm. got to visit people's homes and take trips to uh, studios and things like that, and, and you just learn about. Uh, uh, you know, the, the process and the people, and, and people from the beginning told us, no, it's really important to uh, collect the things you like uh, because you have to live with it. And, uh, and I think another major decision you have to make or any collector would make is, okay, do you want to do this just to decorate your house or do you want to do this so that uh, the art has value uh, as art? Uh, so, you know, we never try and find anything that matches, you know, anything else we have. I mean, mm -hmm. everything, you know, whatever we have, uh, you know, if it looks like it fits somewhere, it's just a coincidence, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we do move stuff around from time to time. Well, once you have a certain aesthetic and taste for a specific thing you like, it tends to, I believe, balance, the pieces balance with each other or play off of each other in great ways too, which is really nice because you'll put pieces together that you collected at different shows and they end up making a good series together Yeah, sometimes. I think all so of that is true. And if something doesn't look right, you just... Move it. You move, unless it's one of those really big... Yeah, yeah. You know, those pieces, we want to make sure they're in the right place. The smaller ones, you know, we've shuffled those around enough times and mm -hmm. things have come to my office and then uh, back from the office to the house. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, but that's true with any, any art. You know, I mean, we, um, you know, every year we commission an artist to make our uh, holiday cards that we sent out in December. And uh, uh, the artist uh, uh, this year uh, she mostly did landscapes and, and so forth, and uh, 
you know, we asked her if she would do a, uh, a really contemporary abstract uh, painting. Uh, she works with a palette knife and, uh, and, and she did one and it came out really uh, beautiful mm -hmm. in, in our opinion. And, uh, and then I asked her, and I have that in my office now, and I asked her if she could do one, uh, you know, much bigger than that, like six feet by six feet mm -hmm. or, or even bigger. And she did that, and, and that's in our dining room. So I had to take down the, the piece that was in the dining room, and I brought that into our office, and then th all the things in the office didn't look right. So they all had to be moved around, and everybody had to be, uh, you know, happy with, the, you know, looking at the art. Uh, every day. So uh, that's one of the fun things about collecting is finding a place to put it mm -hmm. and, and lighting it. Uh, you know, the whole economy gets uh, gets going when you do this. Yeah, yeah. You know. um, are there any art, glass art shows that are coming up if somebody is interested in now scoping out some art pieces? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> you know, there's one uh, in, in Miami uh, coming up in January. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big one. There's always a big one the year in, in uh, December. Um, you know, I don't know how far afield, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, this show goes, but... Uh, um, in uh, June of this year, in Millville, New Jersey, is an event called Glass Weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, Glass Weekend has thousands of, of people that, that come. Uh, you, know, you can come for a day, uh, and, and there's uh, uh, there's auctions and there's uh, galleries uh, that show there, and there's artists uh, uh, and demonstrations and. Uh, you know, it's just really a few hours from uh, Long Island, and you know, if you happen to live in New Jersey, uh, you know, it's right in southern New Jersey. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's in in June. Um, in uh, November, there's probably the largest uh, exhibition of, of glass art. Uh, it's called SOFA, which stands for uh, Sculptural Objects and Functional Art in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um, and also for the beginning uh, art collector, uh, there's the affordable art fairs that take place uh, in New York City uh, several times a year now. There's one in the fall, there's one in the spring, uh, usually in May, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, those are usually down in uh, Chelsea uh, someplace. Um, and the art there is less expensive and, uh, you know, it's quite varied. So, and you know, there's... up and coming artists. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and there's, uh, you know, I would just, you know, look online or you Google art shows and, and they'll probably all come up, okay. you know, depending on where you live. And, uh, uh, you know, if you get interested, uh, you know, in it and, and if you could find a, a group of, of people that share your same interests, uh, especially people that have done it before, more. you know, they can give you some good ideas and tell you what not to do and, mm -hmm. and you know, that's kept us from, you know, from making uh, uh, some significant mistakes through the years. Okay. And now one way that we know each other is uh, I had actually won a scholarship from Holland Fisher back in 2002. Um, when did you get started giving out scholarships? Why? And do you continue to do so? Yes, we do. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we started, uh, you reminded me, in 1998, I think. And, uh, you know, we just thought it would be a good thing to do because uh, usually when, uh, you know, there's any funding cuts uh, in uh, school systems, uh, you know, the first thing that gets cut seems to be the arts. And, uh, and I guess what really got us going was in our uh, Smithtown Rotary Club, the, uh, the school, either the chorus or, or the uh, jazz uh, band or, or, you know, one of these groups would come perform, uh, you know, every December at one of our meetings. And, you know, it, it seemed like a really good group of, of young people. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking these are the people that don't get into trouble, you know, and, uh, you know, they seem to study and practice and, and, and you know, they do what they do and, and not, you know, hang out uh, in places where they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And I said, so this, these are the kind of young people that I like to support. And, uh, you know, the arts, 
the arts and I seemed to get along uh, pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we started the scholarship back then. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we've continued it. And uh, you're one of the few uh, mm -hmm. recipients that's actually kept in touch with me <laughs> through the years. Every now and then I get a card. Um, you know, but I don't know if you'd want to share this story with, uh, with anybody, but uh, <laughs> when you were at uh, the uh, college in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, one time we had a Smithtown Festival Day, and <laughs> uh, our Rotary Club had a booth, and mm -hmm. I look up the street and I see you walking down the street on stilts. <laughs> and. Uh, and you, you told me that you took a clown course mm -hmm. uh, at school. And I said, well, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't have any specifics a, as to what to do with the scholarship, but mm -hmm. I, I thought the clown, <laughs> you know, I never had anybody, and I realized <laughs> that you can't stand still mm -hmm. when you're on stilts, because mm -hmm. you have to keep your balance and you have to move back and forth. But I mean, I remember that like it was, uh, <laughs> you know, a week or so ago. So I hope I don't embarrass you. No, by, no, I mean, uh, it, it was uh, a very interdisciplinary school, yeah. and thanks to your scholarship, I was able to go, and I, I did love the, the School of the Art Institute, so I'm very, yeah. very grateful uh, for that. I'm, as I'm sure many other students are. <laughs> now, have you been on stilts since then? Uh, not recently. Oh, okay. <laughs> not in the last couple of years, but we, I never know what direction oh, things okay. will take me again. <laughs> All right, Harlan Will, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I, we learned a lot about the Art Alliance, and if somebody wants to contact you in regards to the Art Alliance for Contemporary Glass, what is your email address or your best form of contact? Um, well, they can contact me uh, at uh, hj hj fisher mm -hmm. at optonline dot net o p t online dot net uh, or you can go to uh, the Art Alliance website uh, which is www.contemptglass.org uh, and all of our other uh, contact information uh, is there you could also find out about local uh, collectors groups around the country and uh, that's probably the easiest way. Great. Well, it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you for coming on the show. Pleasure Thank was you mine. for all the support of the arts. And I hope you guys tune in next week for the Daily Blue. Thank you.